Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am your host, Vortex, from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is release weekly videos teaching people how to produce music on their iOS device. And in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to record with Interrap Audio inside of Cubasis 3, right after this. And remember folks, if you do enjoy this content, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment with your thoughts down below. Now back in 2013, Apple upgraded their core audio system to support something called Interapp Audio, with the intention that it be the default audio pipeline that can connect multiple audio apps together. Before then, audio apps really couldn't connect to each other outside of some of the early versions of Audiobus, which in and of itself had some issues, especially compared to some of the newer versions that would come later. Now fast forward to today, and we have a new audio standard that Apple developed called AUV3. Now Apple originally developed this back in 2015, but it really didn't start to take hold until a couple years later. And this new AUV3 standard acts much more like traditional VSTs or audio units found on the desktop, allowing you the ability to use these apps directly inside your DAW. However, not every single app supports the AUV3 standard as of yet, so if you do want to utilize certain apps inside of your productions, you will have to still use that old Interapp Audio standard. And in fact, some people still prefer the old Interapp Audio standard because they enjoy the experience of working with the app in full screen, as opposed to using a smaller version of it directly inside the DAW. It's for these reasons and more that I thought it was a good idea to go over the general workflow and point out some of the quirks of working with this older audio standard. And so, without further ado, let's get some audio recorded into Cubasis from some of these Interapp Audio apps. Now, real quick, I would like to say that personally, I do very much more enjoy using the AUV3 standard as opposed to that older Interapp Audio standard style. Now, I understand that not everybody agrees with this, but I still hope that more and more apps do start to implement the AUV3 standard because Apple is going to depreciate that older Interapp Audio standard at some point. Now, that won't be for a while yet to come, so until then, let's go ahead and take a look at the Interapp Audio workflow. Now, the first thing that I want to demonstrate is MIDI out, and that is sending MIDI from Cubasis to an Interapp Audio app. So to do that, first we'll add our MIDI track. Let's go to Add, and then tap on MIDI. Let's put on the headphones to make sure that we can hear something here. Yep, we have sound there, no problem. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some MIDI here, and we're going to use some MIDI from our brand new, completely free Neo Soul MIDI pack that you can find on our website at mobilemusicpro.com. So we're going to browse our MIDI section here, and go into our Neo Soul MIDI pack. And all of our MIDI packs do come with bass, chords, drums, and melodies. So let's first take a look at our chords, and there are a bunch to choose from here. They're all going to be between 8 and 16 bars. Let's just choose one of these at random. Let's first choose number 9. We'll just double tap that, and that will add the MIDI to our MIDI track, and we'll just zoom out a little bit here. And as you can see, that is 8 bars long. Now again, what I want to do is send this MIDI to another app, specifically to an Interapp Audio app that doesn't yet support the AUV3 standard. So we won't be needing the internal piano here, so let's first get rid of that. We'll tap on the instrument, and then we'll tap on the back arrow, and select no instrument. And what this means is that Cubasis won't be generating any internal sounds from this MIDI file. So first, let's go ahead and choose an app to send to. I think we're going to send our chords to Gadget. We'll go to my Groove Machines and Drums folder, and there's Gadget. We'll tap on Gadget 2. We have a couple of instruments loaded up here, but let's just mute one of these for now, so that we just have our piano here. And this is currently set to the Cinematic Grand Preset. Let's make sure we have some audio by tapping a few keys. All right, sounds good. Now let's go back to Cubasis here. And now it's time to send this MIDI to Gadget. So what we're going to do is expand our inspector by tapping on this arrow. And then we're going to go to the routing. And for the MIDI here under the MIDI out, let's tap on that and select Gadget. And now when I click the play button, we should be sending MIDI to Gadget in real time. So let's hit play. All right, perfect. Now next up, let's choose a melody. So let's go back to our media folder. And instead of the chords folder, we're gonna to go to the melodies folder. Let's scroll down here. These are all eight to 16 bar loops again. Now, as you can see here, all of our files are labeled with the BPM and key. So if we look at the first file that we imported, these chords, you can see that those are labeled in C minor. So let's look for a melody here in C minor. And it looks like this melody loop number six is in fact in C minor. So let's choose that one. So let's add another MIDI track. And we can drag that on in. Now I want to send this melody to Sample Tank, I think. So first we'll repeat the process that we did before, which is removing the default Cubasis instrument. So we'll tap on the instrument, and we'll go back, and we'll tap on No Instrument. 
And now we have to open up Sample Tank. So let's open up Sample Tank, go to our Instruments folder, and open up Sample Tank. And it looks like we have a Grand Piano Warm preset loaded up. Let's make sure this works. All right, perfect. Let's go back to Cubasis now. And now we'll make sure this track is selected here. And we'll go to the Routing tab. Let's tap on that MIDI out again. And this time, we're going to select Sample Tank. Let's tap on that. Now this melody should be playing from Sample Tank. So we'll solo this and make sure this is working. Alright, that is working perfect. So now that we have some of this MIDI driving some of those external interop audio apps, I think it's time to get some of that audio back into Cubasis. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use apps like Audio Bus, or a lot of the times the individual apps will allow you to record, and then you can export that file and manually import that back into your DAW. But I think for today, we're going to use Audio Bus because that is generally the easiest way. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll go to our Audio Utilities here. Tap on Audio Utilities and Audio Bus 3. Then we're going to tap on our input. And let's try to get Core Gadget in here first. Let's type in G. There we go. Core Gadget. And let's throw this into Cubasis. Cubasis 3 for our output. All right. So now, as you can see, we have our signal flow loaded up here. We have Core Gadget going into Cubasis 3. So let's open up Cubasis. And there is this new Audio Gadget 2 track. So let's zoom, just zoom out a little bit here. So what we have here is this MIDI file, and Cubasis is going to use this MIDI and send it over to Core Gadget. Then we're going to record that audio from Audio Bus right here. First, we just have to make sure that our Gadget 2 track is armed here, as is indicated by this red dot. So let's go to the beginning, and let's hit record. All right, there we go. As you can see, we have the audio recorded perfectly here inside of Cubasis 3. Now what we can do is stop sending MIDI to Gadget. Since we no longer need it, we can just tap on our output and tap that to None. So, so far we've added chords and a melody from our completely free Neo Soul MIDI pack, and then we've used that MIDI to drive external interrupt audio apps, and then routed the audio from those apps back into Cubasis with Audio Bus 3. So now let's add one more app to the mix. So we had those chords driving Gadget, and then we had the melody driving Sample Tank, now let's get some bass in here. So we'll go back to our media, and let's go back to our MIDI folder here. Go back to our Neo Soul Pack. Let's go to Bases and find a bass close to C minor or C. So as you can see, we have a bunch to choose from in here, but let's choose something close to C or C minor. Let's try this one right here, this bass loop 5. So we'll go add MIDI, and then we'll drag this on in. Move this to the front, and then zoom out a little bit. Looks like this goes for 16 bars, but we're only going to need the first 8 bars, so we'll just trim this up and the audio as well, so it loops nice and perfectly. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the instrument here, the internal Cubasis 3 instrument, and then we're going to open up another app. So, so far we're using Gadget 2 and Sample Tank, but let's open up another one. Let's go to our Groove Machines and Drum Machines, and let's open up Groovebox. Let's hear what this drum pattern sounds like already. We just generated this before we started recording. All right, that's good enough. We just need a basic simple pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this into Cubasis. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, but we're just going to export the raw stem. So let's just go to the export button up here. Let's go to section mix. And we're just gonna do the eight bars here. And we'll make sure that that is a wave file so that it will loop properly. Let's tap on export. And pretty much every single app allows you to export the audio or MIDI somehow some way. Now let's save our files. Let's save this directly into Cubasis 3. We'll save this into our audio folder inside of Cubasis 3 and hit save. Now we'll go back to Cubasis 3. Let's go to our media bay, go to audio, scroll down, and there is our drums. And actually it looks like that was in the key of F. Just for fun, let's go back and make sure that this is in the right key. Even though it's drums, it's still a good idea. So we can tap on our tuner there and let's go to C and export one more time. And there is the C minor. So we can just double tap this and that will automatically add an audio track here. Now Groovebox does have some issues exporting sometimes with the drums. You can see that it's supposed to be 95 BPM, but instead it exported it to 94.5.
So what we can do is we can just zoom in there. We'll tap on the stretch, go to the pro algorithm, and we'll just stretch this properly. There we go. Now we should have drums, chords, and a melody. But before we play this back, I do want to make sure that we get our bass in here. So we did drag our bass file in here, set it to have no instrument. And now we're going to adjust the routing. So we're in our routing tab here. And let's tap on out. And let's choose Groovebox. We'll go back to Groovebox. Take a look here. Make sure that we are on our bass. There we go. And let's, let's enable our bass here. And test this out. All right, perfect. Now when we go back to Cubasis, we should have this MIDI file driving that bass sound inside of Groovebox. So now we should have our chords, our melody, our bass, and our drums. So let's hear what we got. And it's pretty much just that simple. So one more time to go over what we did here. We dropped in our chord loop and routed this over to Gadget. And then we used Audio Bus to get the audio from Core Gadget back into Cubasis. And then we chose a melody loop. And for that, we routed that to Sample Tank. And then we drug in a bass loop again from our completely free Neo Soul MIDI pack. And we routed that over to Groovebox. And then finally, we used Groovebox to generate a drum pattern here. And then we manually exported the audio and imported it back into Cubasis. So whether you're using a MIDI keyboard to enter your notes into the InterApp Audio app, or whether you're using MIDI from inside of Cubasis to drive that app, you should be able to easily always get that all back into the DAW. All right, and now it's time again for our final thoughts. And if you are still rocking with us, then we just can't thank you enough for being here, especially those that are here every single Wednesday and Friday to watch our live streams and our live premieres. And again, we really do hope that more and more apps start to adopt this newer AUV3 standard, not only because it's our preferred way of working, but also because Apple will eventually depreciate the older InterApp Audio standard. And really, it is only natural that as the iPad starts to get more and more powerful, that it does start to adopt some of these proven workflows and methodologies and standards that are found on the desktop. Now, it's not that I want to turn the iPad into a desktop or anything like that, but I would like to utilize some of those proven workflows and standards found on the desktop, but inside of an iPad in a mobile form factor. Now, if you do enjoy conversations like this, you'll probably also enjoy our new podcast called the Mobile Music Roundtable. Once a month, we gather a group of panelists to discuss topics important to iOS music producers. And we just released our very second episode just yesterday, so make sure to check that out. Plus, we just partnered up with Doug from the Sound Test Room again to release a couple of new packs, including a completely free MIDI pack called Neo Soul and a brand new vintage guitar melody pack called Memories. So do make sure to check both of those out because every download and every purchase does help support Open Music Pro and all of the producers that we work with, such as Doug from the Sound Test Room, Braille Audio, and more. And of course, we always have a ton more content coming your way. So if you do want to keep up with everything that we are doing over here at Mobile Music Pro, definitely make sure to check out our completely free mailing list at mobilemusicpro.com. And so until next time, everybody, keep talking music and we'll see you later. Hey everybody, Vortex here, and if you're not aware yet, we now have over 100 fully edited mobile music tutorial videos. And we make music every single Wednesday live on our channel right inside of Cubasis on our iPad. Plus, we also have a bunch of free sample packs, guides, and more at our website at mobilemusicpro.com free. And so if you are into that sort of thing, producing music on your iPhone or iPad, then definitely make sure to subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on the channel that we know you'll love.